Chapter 2, Managing a Project. Happy to have you all back. When you get started with Monday Projects, you'll see that you have two project boards already added for you. Right here we can see Project Alpha and Project Beta. These project boards are identical, so let's take a look at one of them to see how it's built and how to use it. First thing you can do is customize the board name to match the name of the project you are managing. So if we just come right up here and we hover over the project name, you'll see it says click to edit, and then you can edit the name to whatever you want. You can also write a description here if you click just below the project name. And you can write a description of your project board or also write any specific instructions for your team when using this board. You'll also see the board info, the workspace it's in, the date that it was created, the owner of it, and the board type, whether it's public or visible to all members, or if it's private, shareable board, for instance. Now let's take a look at the structure of the board. Every Monday.com board is made up of groups, which we see here, and items, which are the different tasks within each group. Each group in this board represents a phase of our project. So we have planning, we have execution, and we have project launch. The group names are also customizable. If you hover over the group name, you'll see click to edit, and you can edit the group name to whatever you'd like. So say if you wanted to break up your project in a different way, perhaps by department, you can easily do that. You can also add more groups, however many you'd like that fit your project. And to do that, you go up here, it says new task, and you click the blue drop down button, and you can do new group of tasks, and a new group will be created. Additionally, you can go to the three dot menu to the left of your group name, and click add group, and another group will be added as well. As project managers, the first thing to do would be to add tasks you will need to work on your project in the relevant group. You can edit the template tasks by hovering over the task name and clicking on it to edit it as you please. And if you want to add more tasks, you can come up here where it says new tasks and click on new task and it'll add it within a group or within any group you're in, you can go to the last bar under the tasks and click on add task and add it as you please. You will also see a number of different columns in the board. Columns allow us to add the relevant information associated to each task. Let's look at the basics first. Here we have a person column and here we can see the person assigned for each task, and this increases ownership and accountability for your project. We also have a status column, which will allow your team to see the status of the tasks at any given point in the project. If you wanna customize the status columns to your liking, all you have to do is click on any column cell within the status column, go to add or edit labels at the bottom here, and you can edit the name of your status columns. And if you want to change the color, you just go to the paint drop here at the left of the status label and change the color as you please. Press apply when you're done and your status column will be customized to your liking. Next, let's look at one of the most important parts of project management, managing the schedule. For that, we have our timeline column here. There are two ways to add timelines to your tasks. The first is by simply manually adding the timeline using the timeline column. So here we just click on any column cell within the timeline column. We pick the start date that we'd like to start at. And we click the end date and we'll see that the days within the timeline are highlighted in gray and it will be reflected within the timeline column. The second way we can do it is using the duration column. And this is a 
combo column, the timeline and duration column. So whatever is changed in one will be reflected in the other. So say if we wanted to add the duration of our task as five days, we'll put five here and we'll see that it will automatically be reflected in the timeline column. Once you have your timeline in place, it's important to keep track of what is upcoming, due, done on time, or delayed. Therefore, to see at a glance where each task stands according to its status and timeline, we have connected those columns. This means that you'll see a visual indication on the timeline as to whether a task deadline is upcoming, overdue, and once completed, it'll be shown as on time or late. And that column is over here. If we slide to the right, and it's the completion status column. We've also added the completion date column to keep a record of when exactly each task is completed. The date will be populated in the column automatically when a task is marked as done in the status column. And that's using an automation, which is already set on the board. Let's talk about automations. Monday.com automations allows you to set up an incredible range of automated activities to save you time and remove manual work. If we click on automate, which is located in the upper right corner of the board, and we can see that we already have three automations that are pre-built into the board. We click on that and we enter the workflow center. And these are different categories of pre-built recipes. A recipe is made up of a trigger, like the changing of a status, for instance, or an action, or moving an item to a group. You can also have the option to create your own automations within the workflow center. And this is done when you're in here and you see add new automation, and it'll give you the option to create a certain automation that you like. You can learn more about automations by watching our webinar specifically about automations or reading our articles in the knowledge base. Back to schedule management. As we mentioned before, we have a completion status column to give even further visibility on the progress of our tasks and how it aligns with the project timeline. To give you more of an idea, this uses a formula column. And here, if we click on a cell, we can see the specific formula. And this formula will automatically populate based on the completion date compared to the end of the timeline. The formula column is included in our pro plan and above. And the completion status column is going to be really important for the schedule management reporting that we'll cover in chapter four when discussing project reporting. At this point, I would like to suggest that if you think any columns are not necessary for your whole team at any given point, they can be easily hidden from view within the column settings. So all we have to do is come up to where it says hide here in the toolbar at the top of our board. When you hover over it, it'll show hidden columns. Click on it and you can choose uncheck whatever columns you don't want to see at any point, And that will be automatically reflected on your board to hide any columns. Let's say that if your teammates only want to see certain tasks that they're assigned to, we can make use of another board view, which is called tasks assigned to me. If we click on it here, we can filter out whatever other team members we don't want to see the tasks that they're assigned to at any given point. So say if we only want to see the tasks assigned to Grace, we're going to click here and filter it out. And then here, we'll only see the different tasks assigned to Grace. Let's go back to our main table board. So let's take a look at our dependency column. This is where you can set up dependencies between your tasks. This column works with automations to ensure that when timeline changes for one task, the dependent task timeline also changes. We will see our dependencies come to life when we look at our Gantt chart in chapter three. Let's talk about the next columns we see here. The planned effort and effort spent allows you to add in the expected number of hours you think a task will take to complete. And you can change the unit in the bottom of the column, for example. Right now we have it in hours. 
You can also put it in days if you'd like, and it'll change it to days. And these columns are going to be important later for resource management, and we'll be covering that in chapter four of this webinar series. Great. Now we've gone over the structure provided, it's important to state that what you see here is totally customizable to suit your needs and the way your team works. Once you have a board you are happy with, you'll be able to make it a template for all of your future projects. So it's worth investing a little bit of time to customize the board and save yourself time in the future. I recommend that you check out the column center where there are tons of other column types, which you can capture all sorts of data that might be relevant for you and for your project management needs. And again, to find the column center, you just have to go to the right of your group, click on the plus button, add column, and go to more columns at the bottom here, and you'll enter our column center, which will show you all the columns that we have. So you can easily see the data of your tasks. So now that we have the board up and ready for use, let's see how we can work day to day with the board. Of course, the columns we have just covered are where you'll be updating information like statuses, timelines, dependencies, for instance. But what about communication with your team about the tasks in the project? All communication about the tasks in your project takes place from the board itself. By opening up an item of a board, you'll find the update section. This allows task owners to discuss their tasks with stakeholders and keeping the communication in context and one centralized place. So say if we want to write an update to a team member, we just put at and tag a team member. Click update. And then a conversation is started within a task. We can also easily add files to updates to share important documents for each task. So what we're going to do here is go to files within the update section, add file, and choose from your computer any file you want to add into the update section like we just did here. As a project manager, you might find yourself sending reminders to task owners of approaching deadlines. And as we know, this can take up a lot of time. To help you with this, let's look at another automation that we've added to this board. If we go back to our workflow center, we can see that an automation that we already have built into the board is one day before the timeline end date arrives. And only if the status is not marked as done, then we can notify the owner. So this means that the owner of a task will be automatically notified one day before the timeline end date if the status isn't marked as done. It's such a time saver, and you can make any other automations like this that will help your workflow. Talking about saving time, let's look at how we can make the board into a template. As I mentioned earlier, once you have created a project board that you're happy with, you can use it for every new project without having to reinvent the wheel each and every time. To turn the board into a template, click on the three dot menu in the upper right hand corner of the board right here. Go to more actions and click on save template. Click on create a template in the pop up. Now each time you go to add a new board, so we are here in the add column and you can go to your template center and pick the template board that we just saved. And this will save you a lot of time. Awesome, now that we have covered the main components of this board, join me in the next video where we will explore the Gantt chart.